This is your WXEO Daily News Roundup for Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 FM and 1230 AM in Wausau. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. More than 100 Wisconsin local governments have applied for some of $300 million in federal COVID stimulus money. The Flexible Facility Program aims to connect libraries and other public buildings to the Internet. Awards will be announced by October. Republicans are asking voters to move the power to spend federal money in Wisconsin from the governor to the legislature. It's the GOP response to the billions that came to Wisconsin because of the pandemic. There are two referendum questions on statewide ballots August 13th. Republicans are urging yes votes. Democrats are urging no votes. Senator Tammy Baldwin is rejecting calls for President Biden to resign. She tells WISN-TV's up front that Biden is capable of finishing out his term. You have full faith in the president's ability, his mental acuity, as we sit here today to lead the nation. I think the administration and Biden is perfectly capable of finishing out the term. The president himself. The president himself. Democratic Party delegates start voting this week to formally nominate Vice President Kamala Harris to be their nominee for president. A study committee is looking into possibly regulating artificial intelligence in Wisconsin. The goal is to ensure AI doesn't harm consumers or data. Look for public hearings around the state. People fishing in Wisconsin will soon be able to carry guns. The Department of Natural Resources overturned a ban after gun supporters sued the state. After the rule was reversed last week, both sides agreed to drop the lawsuit. You're likely hearing more about Project 2025. It's a sweeping far-right plan which calls for everything from replacing civil servants with political appointees to dismantling the Department of Education. David Nevins publishes The Fulcrum, which is analyzing Project 2025. The cross-partisan approach that we believe in is, in some cases, the federal government can do certain things more effectively, in some cases, not as effectively. And that's the discussion we need to have as a nation. Donald Trump has denied knowing much about Project 2025, even though most of its authors served in his former administration. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WXCO News, I'm Brittany Merlot. We've all heard it's not safe to leave kids or pets in a vehicle, even with the windows cracked. A Safe Kids and Injury Prevention Coordinator with Aspirus Health says that a car can become dangerously hot very quickly. Cracking a window doesn't lower the temperature in a vehicle very much, and children are more susceptible to heat stroke. Kids' body temperatures raise three to five times faster than adults. She says that we can prevent these deaths and near misses by remembering to act. The acronym ACT stands for A, avoid injury and death by never leaving a child alone in a car. C, create reminders to check the back of your car before leaving it. And T, take action. If you see a child alone in a car, call 911. At least 10 children have already died so far this year because of heat stroke. A roller derby multi-game event heads to Stevens Point. Held at the KB Whitlet Ice Arena, doors open at 4 p.m. on Saturday. The emerald ash borer has now been detected in all of Wisconsin's 72 counties. Now confirmed in Burnett County in the town of Meenan. Two trees showed the infestation alongside tree decline with visible woodpecker damage, known as flecking. EAB is usually transported to new areas by hitching a ride on firewood. These larvae bore into the ash trees and carve winding, S-shaped galleries beneath the tree's bark, typically starting in the upper canopy and progressing down the tree. These galleries restrict movement of water and nutrients to the affected areas of the tree leading to branch dieback, canopy thinning, and eventually tree death. In fact, EAB is expected to eventually kill more than 99% of Wisconsin's white, black, and green ash trees. Landowners concerned should contact a forestry professional or an ISA certified arborist and consult the state's EAB information resource webpage to learn about management options. During last year's gun deer season, hunters killed roughly 14% fewer bucks and 27% fewer does in northern Wisconsin compared to the last five-year average. The Natural Resources Board met in Green Bay and unanimously approved certain recommendations for the 2024 deer season. Certain counties will have new restrictions and new opportunities. In Oneida County, there was going to be zero antlerless permits available on public land, but the Natural Resources Board made an amendment and approved that an additional 400 antlerless permits will go out to the public land hunter. 
Bears. And Iron and Ashland County will also see some changes regarding the upcoming season, with only two buck units in northern Wisconsin. Frankly, the entire state is only going to be targeting those antler deer unless you're a youth or military or disabled. This year will also see the latest opening date possible for gun deer season. With decreased deer activity, there will be a decrease in overall harvest. Hunters should get out early and often and scout the areas that you plan to hunt in. A cycling program in the Northwoods is hoping to expand their services. Cycling Without Age is a volunteer-based bike program started up around 12 years ago, and they have a chapter right here in the Northwoods through the Aging and Disabilities Resource Center of Oneida and Vilas Counties. It offers a way for elders to get out on bikes once again with rides for people at events and assisted living facilities and special trishaws. A trishaw is a large reverse tricycle with covered seating at the front and a pilot in the back. Program leaders say it's a great way to get seniors out again, and they're trying to raise money to buy one more trishaw for each county, costing approximately $17,000 per. Fundraising event will be held on August 15th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Rhinelander. And this may come as a surprise to some, U.S. presidential elections and policies do not impact the short-term cost of gas at the pump. Experts at Gas Buddy say that for the long term, the story is different, as impact of policies, including those related to adoption of electric vehicles, are often years in the making. And that's what you need to know. I'm Brittany Merlot. Jordan Love on his record-breaking contract. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports NFL in Green Bay. The Packers held practice in pads as training camp enters its second week. Jordan Love completing a 47-yard pass to Christian Watson on his first day back after signing a contract making him the highest-paid quarterback in NFL history. Love told me the talks began back in May. I asked him what was it like when he didn't have a deal at the start of camp. Yeah, you know, it's definitely been the waiting game uh, these past couple days. I'm just trying to be patient. Um, but knowing that it was going to get done here soon. But yeah, I mean, right after we got done, you know, my agents FaceTimed me and uh, gave me the news and broke to me. So it was a, a very special day here and that and uh, just going through the, the whole motions of, you know, obviously getting a contract, being able to be here and then just obviously being able to get back on the field with the guys. So it was uh, it was definitely a, a very special day. Baseball tonight, the Brewers host the Atlanta Braves. Colin Ray on the mound for Milwaukee. Devin Williams back as the closer. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Chicago Fire had a vacancy that is now filled. The show is adding a proven brand in Dermot Mulrooney, who will replace Eamon Walker as Battalion Chief Wallace Bowden. To be clear, Dermot Mulrooney is not Dylan McDermott. Walker left the show at the end of Season 12. Mulrooney will play the new chief, Dom Pascal. The show will debut its 13th season, September 25th. If you're thinking about starting an OnlyFans account, don't rule out traumatizing your child by having them edit your photos. Sopranos actress Drea DiMatteo says her 13-year-old son, known as Blackjack, edits all her photos for OnlyFans. DiMatteo told former Soprano castmates Jamie Lynn Siegler and Robert Eiler on their Not Today Pal podcast that she had no choice but to start an OnlyFans account because being an anti-vaxxer cost her roles in Hollywood. If it came down to getting a vaccine or my kids seeing me naked, I would sprint to the pharmacy and ask for a double. If you're tired of Ryan Reynolds is a good guy stories, this won't help. Leslie Uggams, who was working as an actress before Reynolds was born, played his sidekick in the new film Deadpool in Wolverine. The 81-year-old actress says Reynolds made her feel safe in the new high-octane Marvel flick. Uggams plays foul-mouth Blind Al a long way from her Emmy-winning role of Kizzy in the miniseries Roots in 1977. Deadpool and Wolverine opened this past weekend in theaters. The lovable Natalie from Facts of Life, also known as Mindy Cohen, has a beef with former castmates. The New York Post reports that a Facts of Life revival was 86th by one of the cast members. According to Cohen, TV legend Norman Lear approached the four actresses about reuniting for a reboot. The meetings took place over Zoom during COVID. Cohen said one of the actresses went behind the other's backs and tried to set up her own deal for her own show. The Post says Cohen did not specify which cast member it was. I really hope it wasn't Tootie. The good news for fans of The Boys is that there will be a season five. The bad news is that it will be the last season, according to showrunner Eric Kripke. More not-so-great news for fans. Producers say the season will take two years to shoot and is still in the early stages of development. Producers of the Amazon Prime show say the soonest the new season can drop would be mid-2026. It appears things are finally on track for an I Am Legend sequel. Legendary screenwriter Akiva Goldsman told Deadline there will be good news soon. How can you have a sequel when the main character died in the original? Goldsman says they are sequelizing an alternative ending. When it comes to millions of dollars, Hollywood can be incredibly resourceful and creative. The first installment of the Will Smith film raked in over a half a billion dollars in 2007. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba. Weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. 
Mostly cloudy today with scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Our high today, 82, with wind out of the south at 5 to 15. Tonight, 69. Tomorrow, partly cloudy with an isolated afternoon thunderstorm and a high in the mid-80s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it's 69. That's your WXCO Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at bullfallsradio.com.